Good evening. We're going to be in Acts chapter number three tonight. Acts chapter three. I got a family member I want everybody to remember in prayer. Uh, who needs prayer? I know that. Peter and John went up to gather into the temple at the hour of prayer being the ninth hour. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple, who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple asking alms, and Peter fastening his eyes upon him with John said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God, and they knew that it was the he which sat at for arms at the beautiful gate of the temple, and they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. And as the lame man which was healed held Peter and held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon, great, greatly wondering. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, Ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Or why look ye so earnestly on us, as though by our own power or holiness we had made this man to walk? The God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, hath glorified his son Jesus, whom he delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. But ye deny the Holy One and the just and desired a murderer to be granted unto you and killed the prince of life whom God hath raised from the dead whereof we are witnesses. And his name through faith and his name have made this man strong whom ye see and know, yea, the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. And now, brethren, I wot not, I wot that through ignorance ye did it, as did also your rulers. But those things which God before has showed by the mouth of all his prophets that Christ should suffer, he hath, to, he hath so fulfilled. Repent ye therefore and be converted, and your sins may be blotted out, when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. And he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you, whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things, which God hath spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. For Moses truly said unto thee, unto the, the fathers, 
A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren, like unto me. Him shall ye hear in all things whatsoever he shall say unto you. And it shall come to pass that every soul which will not hear that prophet shall be destroyed from among the people. Yea, and all the prophets from Samuel and those that follow after as many as have spoken have likewise foretold of these days. Ye are the children of the prophets and of the covenant which God made with our fathers, saying unto Abraham, And in thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. Unto you first, God, having raised up his son Jesus, sent him to bless you and turning away every one of you from his iniquities. Amen. Amen. Go to the Lord in prayer. Remember the prayer list, Miss Jennifer, Miss West, Miss Shelby. Miss Shelby's home. She she can't get around too good, but she's home though. Um, dear Heavenly Father, thank you for another Wednesday night. Lord, another Wednesday night Bible study. Lord, remember the prayer list, Lord. Remember my lost little ones, Lord. Remember my special prayer request for one of my family members, Lord. Uh, I know, I know you can, I know you can do it all. Uh, forgive us when we fail you. Most of all, let your will be done in all these prayers. Amen. Amen. Brother Aaron. And get your red song book. Stand and turn to page 275. 275 in your red, 65, excuse me. 65 in your red song book. 265. Love lifted me. Amen. Good to be in church tonight. 265. Sing it out. I was singing.
God love lifted me. Amen. God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. Genesis 41. Genesis 41. We're moving along. It's been a long journey through the book of Genesis, but it seems like we're kind of picking up a little bit of pace, been able to cover some chapters for tonight. We'll try it again tonight. We'll see how it works. This is a long chapter, 57 verses. <clears throat> We've been looking at the life of Joseph, great man of God, great patriarch in the Old Testament, lived his life with faith and trusted God through all the hard circumstances of life. And A lot of us can find ourselves associated with his life by the things that he went through and how through the help of God he found strength and made it through. Amen. So we've seen where he's been in the pit, and we've seen that he's been down at Potiphar's house and then been lied on there, and now he's been in the prison for several years. It's been a long time since he had a dream that God would use him and do great things. As a matter of fact, it's been 13 years. Amen. He's now 30 years of age. We'll see in this chapter, and God's about to do something in his life. Amen. I've entitled this chapter, Joseph Vindicated. Joseph Vindicated. Amen. He's finally cleared of blame and suspicion. Amen. God vindicates his life. Amen. So let's look at this in Genesis 41 as we see the story here. The Bible said in verse number 1, And it came to pass at the end of two full years. This is the two years after the butler and the baker were put in prison with Joseph. And remember when Joseph told the, the butler, uh, uh, to remember him, and of course the baker got killed, and the but the end of just look back the last verse there before that the Bible said in verse twenty three yet did not the chief butler remember Joseph but forgot him, he didn't tell Pharaoh about him and how he'd been mistreated and lied on and was in prison, wrongfully accused, and uh, now it says in verse number one of chapter forty one and it came to pass at the end of two four years that Pharaoh dreamed, and behold he stood by the river. And behold, there came up out of the river seven well-fatted king, a favored, uh, excuse me, favored king and fat-fleshed, and they fed in the meadow. And so these cattle have made themselves out of the water. Now they're eating in the field. And behold, seven other king came up after them out of the river, ill-favored and lean-fleshed, and stood by the other king upon the brink of the river. And the ill-favored and lean-fleshed king did eat up the seven well flavored, favored and fat king and so Pharaoh awoke kind of shocking shocked him in that dream the Bible said in verse 5 and he slept and dreamed the second time and behold seven ears of corn came up upon one stalk rank and good and behold seven uh, thin ear, ears and blasted with the east wind uh, sprung up after them and the seven thin ears devoured the seven rank and full years. And Pharaoh awoke, and behold, it was a dream. And it came to pass in the morning that his spirit was troubled. And he sent and called for all the magicians of Egypt and all the wise men thereof. And Pharaoh told them his dream, but there was none that could interpret them unto Pharaoh. Then spake the chief butler unto Pharaoh, saying, I do remember my faults this day. Pharaoh was wroth with his servants and put, uh, put, the, put me inward in, in the captain of the guard's house, both me and the chief baker. And we dreamed a dream, and one night I and he, we dreamed each man according to the interpretation of his dream. And there, and there was there with us a young man, an Hebrew servant to the captain of the guard. And we told him, and he interpreted to us our dream, to each man, according to his dream, did he interpret. And it came to pass, as he interpreted to us, so it was me, uh, he restored unto mine office, and him he hanged. A little interesting little note here. A Pharaoh is a title. You know, it was uh, Pharaoh that put these two guys down in the dungeon two years prior and, of course, one of them was brought up and killed, and the other one was uh, restored back to his office, and this is the one that's interpreting his dream. And he's talking about what he did to them, and he's referring to the Pharaoh. Apparently, it's a different Pharaoh two years prior. The other one must have died off, and another one is raised up. 
but a Pharaoh is just a title of a, like a king or a ruler. It's not necessarily his name. So it's two different Pharaohs by the interpretation of the way it's written here because he's telling this Pharaoh about what the other Pharaoh did. Just a little side note. Verse 13, and it came to pass as he interpreted to us, so it was me he restored unto mine office. That's talking about that Pharaoh, right? In him he hanged. Not talking about the one he's talking to. Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph, and they brought him hastily out of the dungeon, and he shaved himself and changed his raiment and came in unto Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I have dreamed a dream, and there is none that can interpret it. And I have heard say of thee and that thou canst understand a dream to interpret it. And Joseph answered Pharaoh, saying, It is not in me. God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I, In my dream, behold, I stood by, upon the bank of the river, and behold, there came up out of the river seven king, fat-fleshed and well-favored, and they fed in, the meadow, in a meadow. And behold, seven other king came up after them, poor and very ill-favored, and lean-fleshed, such as I never saw in all the land of Egypt for badness. And the lean and the ill-favored king did eat up the first seven fat king. And when they had eaten them up, it could not be known that they had eaten them, but they were still ill-favored as at the beginning, so I woke. And I saw in my dream, and behold, seven ears came up in one stalk, full and good. And behold, seven ears with, uh, withered, thin, and blasted with the east wind sprung up after them. And the thin ears devoured the seven good ears. And I told this unto the magicians, but there was none that could declare it to me. And Joseph said unto Pharaoh, The dream of Pharaoh is one. God have showed Pharaoh what he is about to do. The seven good king are seven years, and the seven good ears are seven years. Them, the dream is one. He gave him two dreams to describe the same scenario. Verse 27, and the seven thin and ill-favored king came up after them are seven years, and the seven empty ears blasted with the east wind shall be seven years of famine. This is the thing which I have spoken unto Pharaoh, what God is about to to, uh, to do, he showed unto Pharaoh. Behold, there came uh, come seven years of great plenty throughout all the land of Egypt, and there shall rise after them seven years of famine, and the land, uh, 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 excuse me, and all the plenty shall be forgotten in the land of Egypt, and the famine shall consume the land, and the plenty shall not be known in the land by reason of the famine following, for it shall be very grievous. Pretty bad famine going to destroy the whole population after seven great years prior, right? The Bible said in verse number 20, 32, And for that the dream was doubled unto Pharaoh twice. It is because the thing is established by God, and God will shortly bring it to pass. Now therefore let Pharaoh look out a man discreet or in wise, and set him over the land of Egypt. Let Pharaoh do this, and let him appoint officers over the land, and take up the fifth part of the land of, of Egypt in the seven plenteous years. And let them gather all the food of those good years that come and lay up corn under the hand of Pharaoh and let them keep food in the cities. And that food shall be for store to the land against the seven years of famine which shall be in the land of Egypt that the land perish not through the famine. I mean, Joseph not only interpreted the dream, Joseph voluntarily gave information on how to prepare for it so when the famine come, they'd still have food to eat. In verse 37, And the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of all his servants. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find such a one as this is, a man in whom the Spirit of God is? And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God have showed thee all this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. Thou shalt be over my house, and according to unto thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. You know, just a few minutes ago, that guy was in jail with no hope, 
been forgotten two years by somebody that could have told Pharaoh about him, been spent 13 years after he'd been put in the pit and had a dream, and now Joseph gets uh, uh, up there before Pharaoh and just interprets the dream through God, God giving him the wisdom, says a few words to him, and now he's second ruler in the kingdom. Tell me God can't do great things, amen. It doesn't matter how despair your life might be at the moment, just instantly God can flip the switch. That's how great God, our God is, amen. And so now he's going to make him second ruler in the kingdom. And the Bible said in verse 41, And Pharaoh said unto Pharaoh, See, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand and put it upon Joseph's hand and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck. And he made uh, uh, him to ride in the second chariot uh, which he ha had. And they cried before him, bowed the knee, and he made him ruler over all the land of Egypt. Now, this ain't in the message tonight, but here's a little thought. You know, it was Potiphar's wife that lied to, on him. And Potiphar was a, a high official in the kingdom there. And it says all the officers were there when he interpreted the dream to Pharaoh. Now, Pharaoh's making this guy ruler. You wonder if uh, Potiphar went home that day and said, You remember that Hebrew slave talking to his wife? Yeah, I remember him. And he probably said something like this. Uh, I hope what you said was true about him because he's second in command in the kingdom now. I wonder how she felt if she was still alive. You know, it's one thing you don't ever find Joseph doing, trying to uh, pay somebody back for doing him wrong. He don't do it to his brother when he sees them in the future. There's no information that he done it to Potiphar or his wife or, any, or the butler, or for that matter, to anybody that had done him wrong. Boy, he, he, he practiced turning the other cheek. God help, that's a whole lot easier to preach than it is to live sometime, man. But boy, if, God, if he can do it, and listen, we've got the permanent indwelling in the Spirit of God, and he didn't have it, and he done it. Well, we're pretty much without excuse. And so here he is. Verse 44, And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I am Pharaoh, and without thee shall no, no man lift up his hand or foot in all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh called Joseph's name Zephanath Paneah, and he gave him to wife, Asenath, the daughter of Potiphar, priest of On, and Joseph went out over all the land of Egypt. And Joseph was 30 years old. This tells us the age of how old he was. 17 years old when he got a dream. 13 years later, God's bringing it to pass. Amen. Beginning to get into motion to bring it to pass anyhow. The Bible says that, again, verse 46, And Joseph was 30 years old when he stood before Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And Joseph went out from the presence of Pharaoh and went throughout all the land of Egypt. You imagine? How, you, you can't help but just got to put yourself there. The guy just got pulled up out of prison. He'd been locked up for how many years? Hey, man, how many years he spent down at Pharaoh's house as a slave? Then he got lied on and put in prison. All that took 13 years combined. He's been, uh, he's been brought out of the pit. And he's now he's second in command of the kingdom. And I, I just, when I read that passage right there, and the Bible says, and, and the end of verse 46, and Joseph went out from the presence of Pharaoh and went throughout all the land of Egypt. He's a free man. Can you imagine walking out? I can just see him just smelling the fresh air, looking around at the trees, seeing everything, and thinking, man, look what God has done. Yeah. I mean, he'd been in the dungeon in the prison for how many years? Right. And now he's free to roam all, roam all over Egypt. As a matter of fact, Everybody's under his command except for Pharaoh. Yeah. It's a good day to be Joseph, amen. Yeah. amen. But there have been a lot of bad days. It wasn't a good day to be Joseph. And sometimes that's what the Christian life is, amen. But thank God he knows how to deliver. The Bible says uh, in verse 47, in the, And in the seven plenteous years the earth brought forth by handfuls, and he gathered up all the food of the seven years which were in the land of Egypt and laid up the food in the cities, the food of the field, which was round about every city, laid uh, he up in the same. And Joseph gathered corn as the sand of the sea very much until he left numbering, for it was without number. And unto Joseph was born two sons before the years of famine came, which Azanath, the daughter of Potiphar, uh, priest of On, bare unto him. And Joseph called the name of the firstborn Manasseh. When he, when, this gives a little indication. We don't have much. Uh, we're doing some 
preaching as we're reading or discussing some subjects and kind of lay a foundation because you see a lot of it's a story that's been told and we'll try to hit some highlights in this as we get through it. But there's nothing really said of Joseph complaining and grumbling about anything. I think the last chapter we looked at after he had interpreted a dream to the butler and the baker, he said, hey, how about tell Pharaoh about me? It was the first time he even mentioned anything in any kind of negative light that how he was dealt, right? It ain't like he ran around just trying to uh, give a pity party and whine about everything that's going on. So all we see him is just practicing faith, trusting God, working hard, staying by the stub. No matter how much broke down around him, he stayed by it. And now when you see somebody in that in their life, you think, man, they, are, they, are, they don't let anything bother them. I mean, he, I mean, he's like tough as nails. He's going through, I mean, his brother's lied on him. It's nobody show, shows any emotion in there of any, and there's nothing recorded. I mean, bad mouth and say anything bad. He goes on the slave market. He's slowed in the Potiphar's house. He just gets busy and goes to work. Nothing in the word of God saying he's walking around grumbling, telling everybody, I shouldn't be here. I've been done wrong. None of that, right? And then you see him go down and his, his wife lies on him and he sticks true to trusting God and he's in the pit and he ain't saying nothing negative except what he said to the butler. But then when you see when he has these two children, he names them. And when he names them, he says why he named them. It begins to give a little bit of the insight of his mindset that's not recorded in the rest of it. Now you can look at this and now read some back into what he was going through. But I say that to say this. Look what it says. Verse number 51. The Bible said, and Joseph called the name of the firstborn Manasseh. This is what he called his firstborn son. The Bible said, for God said, he had made me forget my toil in all my father's house. He named that boy Manasseh, and the word Manasseh meant that God had made him to forget my toil. And it shows a little insight that by his name in that child that even though he's kind of smiling and going through the things and doing what's right and being a good Christian testimony, it was still hard. It's still hard, amen. Hey, that, that don't mean we should turn around and, and, and play the pity party. No, we should do like he did, show toughness through the Lord. But, hey, it's hard. You know, I think about that passage over there in the book of Thessalonians about a, a loved one that dies. And the Bible says, we sorrow but not as those that have no hope. Right. It hurts, right? right? But God gives us strength to make it through. Yeah, <clears throat> he said, man, it was toilsome to me. Look what he said in verse number 52. In the name of the second called he Ephraim, for God have caused me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. It was affliction. It was hard times. But God had made him fruitful. And so you see by the naming of those two children, the, a little bit of the insight and the heart of Joseph through his trials, amen. Verse 53, and the seven years of plenteous uh, that was in the land of Egypt were ended. And the seven years of dearth began to come according as Joseph had said. And the dearth was in all the land, but in, uh, in, uh, but in all the land of Egypt there was bread. And when all the land of Egypt was famished, the people cried to Pharaoh for bread. And Pharaoh said unto all the Egyptians, Go unto Joseph. What he saith to you, do. And the famine was over all the face of the earth. And Joseph opened all the storehouses and sold unto the Egyptians. And the famine waxed sore in the land of Egypt. And all the uh, countries came into Egypt to Joseph for to buy corn because that the famine was so sore in all lands. Let's pray and ask the Lord to help us tonight. Amen. Amen. All right, Jacob, how about pray for us tonight? Yes, touch him. Amen. Amen. Joseph vindicated. Amen. That's what you see when you read this passage. Finally, after those 13 years of hardship and what he what did he call it? Affliction, mine affliction is, is tall. God has vindicated this man, and now he's sacked it in command. 
I've outlined a chapter like this, number one, verses one through verse 36 is a great portion of the story here. Joseph's faith. Joseph's faith. Never give up. Number two, verse 37 through verse 45, Joseph faithful. Never give in. Number three, verse 46 through verse 57, Joseph's faithfulness. Never give out. Never quit. Amen. Joseph's faith. Never give up. Amen. He never gave up. That's what we see in his life. And look what the Bible says in verse number one. And it came to pass at the end of two full years that Pharaoh dreamed, and behold, he stood by the river. Amen. Let me read you this passage. I think we looked at it even last week or sometime this around the church recently in preaching. I think it was on this study. But in Job chapter 23 in verse number 10, I like this verse when you think about the life of Joseph here. Uh, Job 23 verse 10, the Bible says this. Listen, he says, but he knoweth the way that I take. He's talking about God. God knew the way Joseph took. Look what the Bible says here. And this is talking about Job, uh, Job but you can apply it to jo uh, Joseph. You can apply it to your life. The Bible says, but he knoweth the way that I take. When he have tried me, I shall come forth as gold. Well, ain't that a good verse when you think about the life of Joseph? He knew the way that Joseph, he knew what Joseph was going through. Hey, God knows what you're going through. Amen. Hey, God knows how to bring it to pass. I remember we done a study not too long ago on that in God's school. And who teacheth like jo God, Job 36, 22. Hey, Job was in the school of God. And he's been schooled by the Lord. And school works when you pass the test. School works when you pass the test. Amen. Hey, hey, this schooling work, Joseph passed the test. He came out with an A, man. He came out with an A plus. Amen. He, he came up above average. We should say, amen. Hey, hey, Joseph was in the school of testing through the Lord, but God knew the way that he took, and it was in God's divine plan to put Joseph in a place that his dream could come to pass, but who would ever thought it would took all this to get that dream to come to pass? I mean, when you get the dream, and when you get the, the, the vision, if you will, and God's put something in your heart, this is what I'm going to do with your life. Hey, this is how it's going to go out. And, man, you get it, boy, you, everybody's excited. It's a good dream. It's a good vision. It's a good uh, uh, the desire to serve the Lord. And God's kind of put it on your heart and said, that's what I'm going to do with your life. But who would have uh, took, he'd have took you through that to get you there. I mean, we like the dream part. We like all the excitement. And Joseph's telling his brothers, he's telling his father, he's telling his mother, and everybody's mocking him for it, and everybody's making fun of him about it, amen. And Joseph never could have dreamed that it would have took all this to get that dream to come to pass. But he passed the test. Joseph had faith. He never gave up. Hey, depending many times he could have gave up. Hey, man, hey, when his brothers mocked him out the gate, some people don't even get past that, and they say, well, if they're going to talk about me, I quit. But Joseph made it past that. Hey, then he got put in the, uh, in the jail, in, in, the, in the pit. He got, they laid physical hands on him by his own brothers, amen, and lied on him. And, and went back and told daddy something different, amen, but he didn't stop him. He went down there as a slave and sold over to Potiphar, and he worked real hard. It didn't stop him. His wife lied on him. It didn't stop him, amen. Hey, hey, he got put down in the prison, and he was down there, and, and the butler forgot him two years later, and he's still down there in that pit. Hey, but Joseph never lost his faith. Yeah. Joseph never gave up. Hey, you know what you got to decide? By the grace of God, I ain't going to give up. I ain't giving up. I got a dream. God's told me what he's going to do. Yes, there's been some hardships through it. It seems like I've been more in a valley than I've been on a mountain. But I know what God's put on my heart. I know what decisions I've made with the Lord. I know what I've given him and decided to faithfully serve him. It ain't always looked good. And sometimes it looked like my dream's a nightmare and it's over. Hey, but God can bring it to pass. Amen. Joseph had faith. Jo uh, hey, what did God use? God used the dream of a, of a Pharaoh. Who would, I mean, who would have thought this is what he would take? You thought, well, maybe this, you know, I've, I've, I've helped this butler and interpreted his dream. Surely he's going to help me out. I've been good to him. I've tried to live clean, do right. None of that worked. And so God wakes, uh, uh, sends a dream to a Pharaoh one night, a nightmare to him. He was so fearful when he, it woke him up, remember? Amen. And then he went back to sleep and dreamed another dream, which is the same interpretation, but he had no clue about it, but it troubled his heart. Amen. Hey, Pharaoh dream. God is working even when you can't see it. Amen. He's working. 
He said, I don't see where he's at. You know, you know what that passed over to Job said? Hey, look that way, look this way, look forward, look back. Where's God at? Hey, God's right there. Hey, Amen. He ain't going nowhere. Hey, hey, he is working. You say, well, I don't see him and I don't know how he's going to do it. Hey, hey, don't quit. Amen. Don't quit. Keep your faith in God. Amen. God will bring it to pass. Hey, you know what you have to do? You know what faith is? You just got to believe it when you don't even understand it sometimes. I don't understand it. You ever have questions like that? I don't understand why this, and I don't understand that, and I don't understand that. Listen, there's some things you ain't going to ever understand until we get to heaven. Yeah, that's, what it, that's why it's called faith. That faith is the substance of things, hope for the evidence of things not seen. Amen. Hey, you just got to trust him. I don't know why I can't see a way out. I don't know why this. I ain't got an answer for this. Hey, 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 listen. We don't have all the answers. This book has all the answers. And unless God reveals it to us, we won't know. Hey, but you know what we can do? We can just keep plugging. Amen. We can keep our faith in God and say, God, you know what's best. No matter how bad it is, no matter how bleep it is in my life, I'm going to trust you and I'm never going to give up. Amen. He never gave up. Joseph had faith. Amen. And look what he says through this, this section of, of having faith. Look in verse 9 through verse 13. The Bible said, Then spake the chief butler unto Pharaoh, saying, I do remember my faults. You know, he brought the musicians in and, and all the astrologers and all his men, or, or wise men, and they couldn't interpret his dream. Nobody could help him out. And then this butler says, Oh, my. Yeah. I, I, wonder how, I wonder how long, you know, Joseph sent all the he, he called for all the musicians. And all those guys that can interpret dreams. And he brought all those guys in. He said, this is what went on with me. And I'm having this dream. And listen, I ain't got no clue. I'm troubled. Can you help me out? And they go through all that. I don't know how long that took. But while all that was going on, the butler's over there squeezing juice into Pharaoh's cup. And he's drinking. And he's just kind of casually going on. And, and then finally, the light comes on. He's like, oh, my. I know somebody. I mean, yeah, you big dummy. How <laughs> much longer are you going to wait, you know? You know, sometimes the light, it takes a little while for the light to click, right? I mean, he's sitting there watching everything go on, and then finally he says, look what he said. Then spake the chief butler unto Pharaoh, saying, I do remember my faults this day. Pharaoh was wroth with his servants. He's talking about that other Pharaoh. See how he words it? He didn't say you were. He said, Pharaoh was wroth with his servants and put me inward in the captain of the guard's house, both me and the chief baker, and we dreamed a dream, and one night I and he, we dreamed each man according to uh, the interpretation of his dream, and there was there with us a young man. He's 28 years old. I guess if you're 28, you're a young man. A young man, a Hebrew servant, uh, to the captain of the guard. And we told him, and he interpreted to us our dreams to each man according to his dream he did interpret. So it came to pass, as he interpreted us, so it was, me he restored unto my office, and him he hanged. We're talking about Joseph's faith. He never gave up. Amen. Uh, Joseph, Joseph treated others right, no matter what he was going through. Now, you know how easy it would have been to say, I quit. Ah, man, it's just too much. This dream stuff and this trying to serve God and this is what I get out of it. You know, everything's rough in my life. He never gave up. And matter of fact, he didn't turn on those around him. Even those that was ne weren't necessarily his friends. These were other guys that had been put in prison uh, for doing the Pharaoh wrong, put down there where he was at. And while these guys were suffering and they couldn't sleep at night, Joseph said, hey, I know how to help you guys. He kept treating others right. You know what you got to do? You got to never give up and keep treating others right. You say, well, I don't know. They don't treat me right. Yeah, do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. Hey, do the Christian thing, amen. Uh, forgiving one another, even God, for Christ's sake, have forgiven you. Hey, just go out and try to help one another. Hey, hey you, you know what happens? Hey, you know what it shows? Joseph never got too consumed with his life. We know by the naming of his two sons that he was hurt. It afflicted him. He had sorrow in his heart. He had trouble, amen. Hey, but he didn't, he didn't sidetrack him where he couldn't help others that needed help. He kept treating others right. He never gave up. You know what the devil wants you to do? Give up. Just quit. Hey, listen, people are watching. You could be the only Jesus they'll ever see. Now, we're not Jesuses. You understand what I'm saying? But he does live in you. They could, you could be the only Bible they ever read. Amen. We are supposed to be written epistles, read and known among men, according to the book of Corinthians. Amen. 
Hey, he treated others right no matter what he was going through. How about you? Look in verse number 14. The Bible says, After he told him this, in favor of sin, I and called Joseph, and they brought him hastily out of the dungeon. And he shaved himself and changed his raiment, and he came in unto Pharaoh. He never gave up. Amen. Here he comes forth. Hey, they brought him out of prison to deliver the world. Ain't that a good thought? Egypt's a type of the world. Hey, you know what he brought him? They brought him up out of prison. You know who else was brought up out of prison to deliver the whole world? Jesus Christ, amen. And what we'll see in this study tonight is more comparisons to Joseph to the life of Christ. Hey, hey, the Holy Spirit of God that inspired this book was writing stuff about Jesus Christ before he ever showed up, amen, through the life of a man named Joseph, amen. Hey, he demonstrated Jesus in his life. Boy, do you demonstrate him in yours? He never gave up. He had faith, amen. They brought him out of Egypt to deliver the world, out of prison to deliver the world, amen. Hey, hey, hey he's, and the Bible said he shaved himself, changed his raiment, and came in into Pharaoh. Why did he shave himself? Well, beards were an abomination to the Egyptians. The Egyptians didn't believe in facial hair. Matter of fact, it was an abomination. And you said, well, Joseph knew better than that. But you know what Joseph did? Joseph's going to walk with wisdom with them that were out without, Colossians 4 or 5. Hey, 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 if it's going to, if meat make my brother a fin, I'll eat no meat while the world standeth. He's going before Pharaoh. He says, you know what? I'm in his kingdom. He's un, I'm under his command. I'm not going to rub any feathers. It's just facial hair. I like my beard, but you know what? If I can shave it and be a good testimony for my God, then I'll shave my beard. Well, that's pretty dedicated, ain't it, amen? Hey, hey, he, he, it was abomination to the Egyptians, amen. Hey, hey, he, he went in, washed himself, changed his raiment, amen, and came in under Pharaoh's shade. He come in, he presented himself right. You know what? As Christians, we are to present ourselves right. Amen. Present yourself. If he can do it under Pharaoh, we ought to be able to do it under our God. Make a big deal about how you ought to dress nowadays and how you ought to look and how you ought to do. Hey, hey, present yourself right before God. God's watching everything we do. Amen. Amen. Give God your best. He deserves your best, right? Yeah. Amen. He would say people, people make a big deal about church on that kind of stuff sometimes, and we've got a bad rap around it around the community. You know, if you go down to Hopewell, they're going to tell you how to wear a suit, and all the women got to wear dresses and sleeves down to their ankles and, and wrists and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> Stri- yeah, I mean, you, that's what they do. They make some kind of mess out of something that don't really matter. And you know, we got some standards. Say, remember what's wrong with standards? They got standards if you go to the convenience store. Yeah. I mean, you can't go in the convenience corner without shoes and a shirt. Yeah. Why don't they get mad at the convenience corner owner? Yeah. I wasn't going to say the other one. He did, amen. But why they want you to get mad at Walmart when they tell you how to dress, yeah. right? But if the church does something, it's all the big thing. Oh, I ain't going down there. <laughs> oh, man, you can't give God your best? Yeah. Hey, if your best is, hey, nobody said you got to wear a suit. Right. Hey, nobody even said you got to wear a dress. Hey, but you ought to wear your best. Hey, man, what's wrong with giving God your best? What's wrong? Hey, he's coming up on him. He washed himself. Hey, take your stinking bath, put some deodorant on, and come ready to worship God. Nothing wrong with that. Aaron, let me listen to a little clip of something Dr. Ruppman said the other day. He was talking about, people were talking about his church. said, you go down there, they're going to preach you, get your long hair and this and that. And he said, man, you're really one tough soldier of the cross, ain't you, amen? And I thought, ain't that funny, amen? Hey, we, we ain't got many soldiers of the cross. Yeah. Just a little, little thing makes them mad. You're supposed to be a soldier of the cross or uh, 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 fighting the good fight of faith and somebody's going to say something about the way you dress and smell and you're going to run and go AWOL. You're a real soldier, amen. Real tough Christian. Real tough. Yeah. Amen. Real tough. Amen. amen. Anyhow, he presented himself right. Amen. Hey, what did Joseph have? Joseph had faith. He never gave up. Amen. Look at verse 15 through verse 16. The Bible said, And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I have dreamed a dream. There is none that can interpret it, and I have heard say of thee that thou canst understand a dream to interpret it. And Joseph answered Pharaoh, saying, It is not in me. God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace. Amen. He never gave up. He had faith. He had faith in his God. Amen. You know what it takes? It takes a God-filled man to interpret God's words. It was God that gave Pharaoh the dream. Amen. You know what it took to interpret it? A God-filled man. Hey, look back in verse number 8. Look in verse number 8. And it came to pass in the morning that his spirit was troubled, and he sent and called all the musicians of Egypt and all the wise men thereof. And Pharaoh told them his dream, but there was none that can interpret them unto Pharaoh. They couldn't get it. Amen. Hey, you know what it takes? It takes a God-filled person hey, that can understand God's words. People say, well, I don't understand a little archaic King James Bible. Well, if you get the Spirit of God, you can. 
It was those, those, those musicians and astrologers and wise people of Pharaoh's day that were lost that couldn't understand God's words, but God's man could understand it. Hey, you can understand God's word if you got the Holy Ghost. He wrote that book. It's breathed of God, right? And he lives in you. I believe you ought to be able to understand it. I'm saying you get it all. God will reveal it in time. But it's a lame excuse. Say, I can't understand the book. Well, the Holy Ghost that wrote it lives in you. Ask him to open it up. He'll guide you into all truths. It took a God-filled man. Amen. Joseph had faith. He never gave up. Amen. He was a God-filled man. Amen. Hey, the devil's crowd couldn't do it, but God's man could. Hey, God, he, you know what Joseph said? He said, I heard you can do it. Would it have been a good time to say, yeah, I can. Watch me shine. And try to impress Pharaoh, you know? I mean, he's, it's, hey, this is his one chance out of prison. You know? You don't, you don't want to blow this one. Uh, you know, maybe if I kind of twist it a little bit and rob a little glory from God, maybe to help me out in the end result. That's the way some people think sometimes. But not Joseph. Joseph had faith. He never gave up. He believed God. He trusted God. He, he believed what God could do. Amen. You got to believe that God is and a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. He believed God. Amen. Now look at this in verse number uh, uh, 16. He, Joseph answered Pharaoh saying, it is not in me. That's pretty humbling, ain't it? It ain't me. God, big G God, shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace. He gave glory to God. He not only gave glory to God, to make such a statement like that was courageous. I mean, at first reading, you think, that's not really courageous. It's kind of, it's humbling that he don't rob the glory from God. But it's also courageous, you know why? Because Pharaoh was a God. And you know what Joseph said? God will reveal it to you. Hey, you ain't the God, but I know the God, amen. He's the big God, amen. Hey, to say God shall reveal it unto you, he's saying, hey, there's somebody greater than you, yeah. Pharaoh God. That's pretty co courageous, amen, to stand up like that. I mean, he, he, hey, he can easily put that boy back in jail. But he's got his one opportunity to stand before the Lord, stand up for God, and he's going, it doesn't matter whether it's Pharaoh, his service, it don't matter if it's Potiphar, it didn't matter if it's his wife, it didn't matter if it's those people that picked him up out of that slave pit and took him down to the cellar. Hey, Joseph stood up for God. Yeah. He didn't call it to whoever he was around. Right, right. God's able to do it. Hey, Joseph's faith, he never gave up. Never gave up. Amen. He gave God the glory. But look in verse 34 through verse 36. You, we can, you can go read it. A lot of it's just that story being told of the dream and interpretation over and over. Not that it's anything wrong with reading over and over. God put it in there for a reason. Verse 34, let Pharaoh do this. Let him appoint officers over the land. Now, he interprets the dream to Joseph, I mean, to Pharaoh. He tells him what it is. It's going to be seven, grievous, uh, seven plenteous years. And it's going to be so extreme, God gave you the dream twice, right? He said, God's going to multiply this thing, man. You're going to be getting crops. They're going to be running out your ears, you know. He said, but here's what you do. You put some of it back. He's meant to tell him what to do. Hey, but after that, there's going to be seven years like you've never seen. Like you've never seen. Hey, hey, you know there's coming seven years like there's never been seen? Yeah, it's coming. It's going to be bad. He said, well, we're getting by real good right now. Yeah, but as soon as the rapture takes place in that first three and a half years, then all hell breaks loose. It's going to be bad on earth. Look, something like no man's ever seen. Look, verse 34, let Pharaoh do this. Let him appoint officers over the land and take up the fifth part of the land of Egypt and the seven plenteous years. Let him gather all the food of those, year, good, those good years that came and lay up corn under the hand of Pharaoh and let them keep food in the cities. And that food shall be for store in the land against the seven years of famine, which shall be in the land of Egypt, that the land perish not through the famine. Amen. Joseph not only reveals the dream, but he gives a plan to prepare for it. Amen. Here's a Jewish man with a plan of salvation. Salvation is just deliverance. Amen. It's not just salvation for a soul, salvation for anything. Here's a Jewish man given a plan for, the, for salvation. Who's that? That's a great type of Jesus Christ. Hey, you know he's got the plan? Yeah. He's got the plan. You know what his plan is? I am the way, yeah. the truth, right. the life. No man cometh the Father yeah. but by me. Yeah. Hey, what must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Thank God he's got a plan for salvation. Amen. Yeah. 
the Jewish man does. Amen. He's got a plan for this old world. And Joseph's faith, Joseph never gave up. Number two, Joseph's faithfulness, he never gave in. He never gave in. Look, look, look at We see this in verse 37 through verse 45. Uh, from verse 37 down to the remainder of the chapter, matter of fact, if you look at verse 37, you see verse 37 there? If you have a Bible that has paragraph markings, there's a paragraph marking there. Amen. And that paragraph marking marks the change of the paragraph, of course, and shows the change of the, of the scene in the story here. And from that paragraph marking, the Holy Ghost put in there, by the way, down to the remainder of the chapter, the author of the Bible begins to speak of the coming Christ. And he paragraph marked it away from the uh, further part, first part as he begins to describe a little deeper about Jesus Christ coming. Hey, hey, God cares about his son. Amen. Whether he's talking about him through the life of Joseph or any other instrument or sacrifice in the Old Testament. And of course him revealed bodily in the New Testament. God speaks about his son. Joseph's faithfulness he never gave in. His faith he never gave up, but his faithfulness he never gave in. Amen. Hey, you know there was no man like this man? Look, look, look at the types of Christ here. Look at verse 38. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find such a one as this, this is, a man in whom the Spirit of God is? Do you know there was never a man like Jesus Christ? Amen. You know what they said? Never a man even spake like this. Amen. Amen. There was never a man like this. The Bible said according to John chapter 5 verse 34, he was given the Spirit without measure. You know about Jesus Christ. You know what Pharaoh said about uh, uh, Joseph there? Hey, can we find such a one as this, a man in whom the Spirit of God is? No, he ain't found nothing like that, amen. Look at verse 39, how he types the type of Christ. Verse 39, and Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God hath showed thee all this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. Do you know there was none as wise as Christ? John 5, verse number 20. Right, look at verse number 40. Thou shalt be over my house, <laughs> and according unto thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. What do you see out of this, amen? He said, over my house. Hey, you know who was over whose house? The house of God. Uh, Hebrews chapter 3 and verse number 3. You know what else he said there? He said, not only are you over my house, and according to thy word shall all my people be ruled. You know what we're ruled by? All thy words. He said, all thy words. Thine words. You see that right there? In verse number 40, he says, thou shalt be over my house. That's Christ type. And according to thy word shall all my people be ruled. You know what rules the world? This book right here. So I don't like it. It doesn't matter. It still rules all. It's according to thy word. Amen. According to thy word. Hey, you know a good, interesting study? I think it's found, let's see, I count them for you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve 10, 12 times in the Psalms 119, that great chapter about the word of God, you'll find that phrase, according unto thine word. Somewhere around that, that, that wording of it. Twelve times. You'll re just go look it up. It's a pretty neat little study, amen. It's according to his word, amen. It's according to what God said. Look in verse 41. The Bible said in Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I've set thee over all the land of Egypt. You know what the Bible said in John chapter 13, verse 3? All power is given unto the Son. He's got power over all of it. You see how the Holy Ghost is speaking about the life of Joseph and the same time he's speaking about the coming Savior? Hey, God's entwining that thing from beginning to end. You're going to have to say, hey, there's a God or something. It's just a coincidence. No, it ain't just a coincidence. This book's divinely written. Look at verse 42, the sign of righteousness and deities there. Verse 42, the Bible says, And Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand and put it upon Joseph's hand and arrayed him in a vesture of fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck. Gold representing deity. Jesus Christ was God. Look at verse 43. And he made him to ride in the, what? Second chariot. Why the second chariot? Because Pharaoh's in the first one. You know in this passage what Pharaoh is a type of? He's a type of God the Father. There ain't nobody in charge greater than, 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 than Joseph than Pharaoh. But Pharaoh's in the second chariot. You know who the second one of the Godhead is? When you begin to describe Jesus Christ, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, he's in that second chariot. And we know he's God, but there's just something about that thing, how that thing works, ain't it? Amen. God, the Father gave all power to the Son. He's riding in that second chariot, which he had. And they cried before him, bowed the knee, and he made him ruler over all the land of Egypt. You know what everybody's going to do one day? Bow the knee to him. Amen. Everybody. Everybody's going to confess 
Amen. Philippians chapter number 2. Amen. Look at verse 45. And Pharaoh called Joseph's name Zaphonath Paneah, and he gave him to wife Azanath, the daughter of Potiphar, Potiphar, priest of On, and Joseph went out over all the land of Egypt. Amen. What is this? He gets a Gentile bride. She's a Gentile bride. Matter of fact, she's a Hamite, not only just a Gentile bride. She's from Egypt, and she's given to Joseph. You know what, you know what the God the Father did? He got him a Gentile bride. Yeah. Amen. A Gentile bride. Yeah. Listen to this right here. Uh, a Young's Concordance translate uh, Zaphonath Panea as meaning the Savior of the world. <laughs> what that name means. He gave him that name, the Savior of the world. Y'all know who the Savior of the world is? Yeah. Unto you is born this day in the city of what? And who is born? A Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen. He's the Savior of the world, John 4, 42. It also is translated, it means the food of life. You know what Jesus Christ said? I am the bread of life. It also means a rescuer of the world. Well, you know who came to rescue this world? Jesus Christ. Amen. Obviously, Genesis chapter 40 and 41 dealt with the humiliation of Christ in the flesh. And in chapter 42 is his exaltation after the resurrection. Amen. Hey, hey, Joseph was humiliated, but hey, he was brought up just as Jesus Christ was humiliated and then he was brought up. Amen. Great type. Amen. Hey, she's a type of the, of the Gentile bride, as an heir. Amen. Somebody said this. I wrote it down. I thought it was real good. Uh, Eve is pictured, is a picture of the formation of the church. You know, she's taken out of the side of Adam, Adam the type of Christ. And she's, he's the type of the, the bride, the, the church, right? And the formation of it, it come out of his side. Rebecca speaks of the faith of the church. Well, the formation is a type through E, but Rebecca's a type of faith. You know what they came to Rebecca and said, will you go? Will you be this man's wife? And she had a choice and she took faith. She'd never seen him. He said, I'll, I'll go. And she married who? Isaac. Amen. Remember uh, uh, Abraham sent his servant down there, Eleazar, type of the Holy Ghost, to go get a bride for his son, and she had to go by faith. So Eve pictures uh, the formation of the church. Rebecca speaks of, uh, of the faith of the church, but Azanath sets before us the future of the church, the future of the church. Hey, what was she? She's just a Gentile dog. That's all she was. Hey, she been on, she down at Pharaoh and, and part of her house, the priest of On. You know what they were worshiping? The sun god, the S-U-N. You know what she did? She traded in her sun god for the son of God. Amen. Yeah, right. Amen. She's, she's a fit preacher of the future church. Amen. Hey, just like we were, we were lost without hope and without God in this whole world. Hey, but Jesus Christ changed our lives. That's good, man. Joseph presented himself to his brethren. Hey, I got a dream. You know what his brother did? They rejected him. But you know what Azanath did? She received him. You know what the Bible says in John 1 and 12? He came into his own, his brethren, according to the flesh, and his own received him not, but to as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Hey, Joseph, Jesus Christ is stamped all in this thing, man. We're just hitting some of it. She left her son, God, for Joseph. Hey, the temptation and affliction Joseph went through. We saw about Joseph's faith. He never gave up. But Joseph's faithfulness, he never gave in. You know what the temptation and affliction is? To give up. I can't take it no more. It's too rough. But you know what the temptation is in prosperity? Now he's out of prison. He's second in command. Joseph, you can do whatever you want to now, and you can get everybody back. The temptation and affliction is to give up, but the temptation and, pro and prosperity is to give in. You know what he did? He didn't give up and he didn't give in. He didn't give up when it was rough and he didn't give in when he got prosperous. I'll give you this last one real quick. Give me five country minutes. Amen. It's two after, three after. My wife trying to help y'all out and tell me. Amen. I'll see you over there, honey. Look in verse number 46 through 57. Number three. Amen. Joseph's faithfulness. Never give out. He never gave up. He didn't give up no matter how hard it got. He didn't give in. Well, some people don't give up, it gets hard, but then God blesses them and they give in. It ain't the affliction that gets them a lot of times, it's the prosperity. Joseph had it all, but he said, I ain't giving in. I'm, it's all honor still due to God. But he didn't give out neither, he didn't quit. His faithfulness, what did he do? He went to work. 
Amen. Joseph went to work. Amen. The Bible says in verse 46, And Joseph was 30 years old, and he stood before Potiphar, king of Egypt. And Joseph went out from the presence of Pharaoh and went throughout all the land of Egypt. What's he going to do? He's going to work. There's a dream. There's a famine coming, but they've got to get the stuff into prosperity years and stack it up so they'd have something when it was bad. Jesus, like Joseph, once again, the Holy Ghost is all over this thing, began their public ministries at the age of 30. All kind of types do that. His faithfulness paid off. Look in verse 50. And unto Joseph were born two sons before the years of the famine came, which Azanath, the daughter of Potiphar, the priest of Onam, bare unto him. And he called that first one Manasseh. In verse 52, he called the second one Ephraim. His faithfulness paid off. You know what the Bible says in Psalms 30, verse 5? Great verse, man, when you live in this old world. Amen. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. You know what those youngins did? They made him forget a lot of that sorrow. Amen. Hey, 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 you know what to help you forget all that sorrow? Hey, not only young as, thank God, grandbabies. Amen. amen. That'll make you forget a lot of trouble, amen. All those sleepless nights with those sorry youngins that ran you crazy because they wouldn't do right and you get the grandbabies, glory be to God, amen. amen. Faithfulness pays off, amen. Never give up, <laughs> never give in, never give out, amen. Thank God joy comes in the morning. Hey, you know what he says in verse 55? Look, here's what Pharaoh said. He said to that crowd, Pharaoh, another type of God here, Pharaoh, type of the son. Look, the Bible said, and, and when all the land of Egypt was famished, the people came to Pharaoh for bread. And Pharaoh said unto all the Egyptians, go unto Joseph. What he saith to you, do. What's that remind you of? Remember Jesus Christ when he was on earth? And they come to his mother. And they see that, that wedding. And they have no, no wine. And he, she said, whatever he saith to you, do. That's still true today. The Catholics need to get a hold of that. It ain't according to what Mary said. It's what he said is what you need to do. Hey, you know one thing he said? You know, just he said a lot, but here's your good one. Ye must be born again. You better do what he said. You better do what he said. Amen. You say, I don't want to go to hell and do what he said. I don't want to, I don't want to uh, live a defeated life. Well, do what he said. Whatever he says, do. Amen. Hey, hey, if you want to never give out or never quit, just keep doing what he says. Amen. Whatever he said, do. Do you do what he says? Lastly, verse 56 and 57, Jesus and Joseph have bread to offer when no one else did. Nobody had bread. You know who had bread? Joseph. You know who's got bread for this world? I'm not talking about physical loaves. I'm talking about the Son of God where he sees the bread of life. You know who has bread when nobody else in the world has it to offer? Jesus Christ. Amen. He's the one that has what the, the, can fill the longing of your soul in your wearisome life and you just feel like I've tried everything else. Hey, hey, they wouldn't know where to go, but Joseph, you're going to eat. He's the only one that had it. you got to go down to Egypt. Joseph's got it. Hey, hey, if you're going to get life, you're going to have to go to Jesus. He's the only one that's got it. Yeah. If you're going to get out of that misery you're in, you've got to go to Jesus. He's the only one that's got it. Thank God he's got it today. Thank God. Hey, hey, if you're here and you slipped in the night and you're lost, you don't have to go to hell. Jesus Christ made a way for you. I'm talking about the Jesus that New Testament. This Bible's been talking about all the way through. He stamped all over this thing, and he'll stamp all over your life and change it if you'll let him. If you'll just do what he said. You say, Preacher, what do I got to do to be saved? Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It's that simple. You ain't got to go to hell. Matter of fact, you ain't got to live defeated. You don't have to give out. Just do what he said. He had bread. Amen. Let, let me turn here and we'll close with this. Look in Isaiah 55. Joseph was faithful in, in, in affliction, and now he is faithful in prosperity. How long will you stay faithful? How long? If you're afflicted, listen, listen, keep your faith. Never give up. If you're going through it and God's blessing you now and you've made it on the other side of it, hey, stay, keep, being, uh, keep the faith in God. Stay faithful to God. Never give in. Don't give in. Hey, the God that took you out of that affliction is the God's going to take care of you in your prosperity days. And stay in your faithfulness. Joseph's faithfulness. Don't ever, never give out. Amen. Look what he says here. Joseph had bread. I like this verse. We just, that's why I thought we'd turn here. Isaiah 55, look in verse number 1. Amen. They had to go to Joseph if you wanted bread. You know what Jesus said? Oh, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters, 
And he that have no money, come and buy and eat. Yea, come, buy wine and milk without uh, money and without price. Amen. Hey, you know what God wants you to just come? I can't afford it. Hey, you couldn't buy it if you could. Amen. You ain't got enough money. You don't have to buy it. Amen. You just got to trust what Jesus Christ done for you on the cross. Thank God he'll save your soul. Hey, man, all you got to do is come and say, I ain't got nothing to offer him. My life's a mess. I've done everything wrong. Hey, that's the kind he's looking for. Amen. He come to seek and to save that which is lost. Amen. That's what he wants. Maybe somebody in here tonight lost. Maybe somebody watching on the Internet or maybe watch it down the road. Hey, don't die without Jesus Christ. Yeah. But child of God, never give up. You say, I'm afflicted. Joseph never gave up. Hey, he got on the other side of it and God blessed him. He never gave in. The temptation on the other side is not to give up. It's just to give in. You know, I just enjoy a little bit of it. And let your hair down. No, oh, man, we didn't come too far to give in. And number three, never give out. Don't quit. Stay by the stuff. He, he got out and went to work. Stay by it, amen. Yeah. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed, amen. Joseph was vindicated. Hey, I don't know what you're going through tonight, but God will vindicate it. He's the judge of it all. Doesn't matter what everybody else is saying, what everybody else thinks. You let God do what He does. Amen. He can help you. Maybe you're here and you're lost. Boy, tonight would be a good night to get saved. Won't you come down here and let somebody take a Bible and get you get things settled in your heart with the Lord? If you are saved, are you serving Him? Is the affliction hard? Nobody said it would be easy always. And sometimes it is very hard. Joseph admitted it was hard, the affliction that he went through, but he never gave up. Listen, whatever you do, don't give up. Keep your faith in God. God knows what he's doing even when you can't see it, and he's working when you, you can't see it, just as we've seen in the life of Joseph. Maybe you're on past that affliction, and you've been blessed by God, and the devil's trying the other side of that thing to try to get you to give in. Don't you give in. No, we ain't, no, devil, you ain't getting it now. You ain't getting it. Tell him to get thee behind me, Satan. You ain't getting it. Don't you give out and say, I'm tired and more, we're weary. Hey, don't give out. Keep plugging. Keep going. Vindication's coming. God will make a way. And in the end, you'll look back in hindsight's 2020, you say, look what God has done. Look what great things God has done. Well, that's what we ought to be longing for. Maybe there's been some hiccups and some mistakes and failures, maybe on your part or on the part of others towards you. Hey, you don't have to quit. You can confess your sin. You can put it under the blood and get up and say, God, we got a dream. I made some commitments to you years ago, and I ain't always done what I ought to, but by your grace, I want to see the dream fulfilled before I leave this place. Stay by it. He's able. He's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think. Joseph was vindicated. Amen. Everybody stand. Hope you've been encouraged tonight through the Word of God. It's good stuff in there. Amen. Get in your Bible. Keep reading. Uh, did anybody get some missionaries to pray for tonight? I didn't, I didn't say that. Appreciate it.